Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH. Today, well, we have something that's kind of fun and it's a follow-up to a series that we did a little over a year ago. Specifically, Supermicro gave me the keys to their demo room and said, well, why don't you go take a look at a couple servers? And so that's exactly what I did. And specifically, I decided, hey, let's go look at something that really is designed for kind of like a high-end edge server that you could put accelerators in and all kinds of stuff like that. And that's why we're gonna be looking at the Supermicro Hyper E Super Server. Specifically, this is the Sys 220 HEFTNR our server, and well, why don't we get over to the demo room so we can go start looking at this thing. Before we get too far in this video, I do want to note something that is super important. We are marking this video as sponsored. And the reason for that is that I don't necessarily live 15 minutes away from Supermicro anymore. Instead, I live in Austin, Texas. And so both I flew out, Joe flew out. And so Supermicro is helping us cover the you know flight costs and travel costs and stuff like that to be able to go and actually do this. But they basically just gave me the keys to the demo room. And so they also gave us the keys to the demo room and let us use these boxes. But they basically said, hey, you know, go do your thing, go do whatever you want to go do. And they did not give me a script. This is all being done completely editorially independent, just like everything we do on STH. So I just want to be very clear that that's what's going on and that's why we're marking this as sponsored. With that, let's get over to Supermicro. This system is really cool because this is a dual Intel Ice Lake Xeon system. You have a full set of memory, but you also have an absolute ton of expansion. Plus, you also have a short depth chassis, which you can see here. And so my basic plan is we're gonna start at the front of the system and we're gonna move our way back to the rear and we're just gonna go talk about all the really cool components. I was just actually taking this system apart and I saw some things in here that I haven't really seen in many, if any, super micro systems before. So I just kind of thought, I thought they were interesting and maybe you'd like to see them as well. All right, so let's start with the front of the system and specifically, let's start talking about the power supplies. Now in these kind of edge, to you systems that are actually becoming very popular at the edge, you know, like a system like this, what you see is that there's two different ways that people actually wanna see their power supplies. One way is they want it traditionally like at the rear of a chassis, but the other way is that folks actually want the power supplies on the front of the chassis. So that way, if you have to go and maintain the system, all of the cables are all on the same faceplate. And if you're in an aisle where you can't really get to the back of like a container, a shed, or you know just an equipment closet, it's really important that you actually have all of the cable connectivity on the front so that it can be accessed by a technician very quickly. And so having the power supplies in the front like this, that's actually a feature that is specific for the edge market. Now, these power supplies are not small by any means, even though this looks like it's a short depth chassis. These are actually two kilowatt power supplies. And these power supplies are 80 plus titanium units, which means that they're very high efficiency, so you don't get a lot of loss, and they're technically a little bit greener than some of the, you know, kind of older, less efficient power supplies. But that two kilowatts may seem like a lot for a short depth chassis like this, but it actually needs it because some of the other features we're about to go look at. The next bit that we're gonna look at is actually the IO block. And this is a lot different than some of Supermicro's standard offerings, and it really is tailored to this edge use case. The reason for that is that you're gonna see that there is a single one gigabit ethernet dedicated port just for management, that's your IPMI port. And that's really the only networking port that you're gonna see on the back of the system that's on the motherboard itself. There are also two USB 3 ports and they're type A ports. So if you do have to go and hook up a keyboard or a mouse or something like that to the system, or you need to plug a USB drive in or something, you actually have that availability on the front of a system. Very easy to go get to. In terms of legacy support, there's also a VGA port. And that's, again, if you do have a technician coming in and they have to have a keyboard and a monitor and something they wanna physically access the server, that's how you would do that. So the overall IO block, that's basically it though. That's the standard IO that's basically coming from the motherboard and there just isn't that much in this system, but that's for a very specific reason. And that's the next feature we're gonna look at. The next feature is that we get two Supermicro AIOM slots. And these AIOM slots are Supermicro's version of the OCP NIC 3.0 standard. And that basically gives you the ability to go and have all kinds of different networking options. And the reason that these AIOM slots are so interesting 
is that you can actually go and service them without having to open up the chassis like this. You can actually just go on that front panel and just go change out your network. So if, for example, you have these deployed at the edge and you have a technician tight quarters in some kind of edge location and they have to go change out your network. Say they want to do an upgrade from 10 gig ethernet to 25 gig ethernet, or maybe they want to go to 100 gig ethernet. Well, to do that, you can just go in and just pull these little cards out and then push the new one in. You don't need to get inside the system. That makes it super easy to service. So if you compare that to having ports on the motherboard itself, having something that's a little card that really has all of your networking, that's a way easier to service solution. Okay, but let's get to the biggest feature by far in this system when you're looking at the rear of the system. What you're gonna notice is that there are a total of eight IO expansion slots, and these are full height expansion slots as well. So not only are we getting that front IO with the dual AIOM or OCP NIC 3.0 slots, we're also getting the ability to go and put a ton of add-in cards. Now, all of these add-in cards are actually on PCIe risers that you can actually just go pull in. There's no tools involved. They're very easy to go and service. And something else that you'll see is that we do actually have the power cables for things like GPU power. Now, the idea with a system like this is that you can actually go and put not just GPUs, you can also go put accelerators. So if you want to have a big FPGA card and want to go do something along those lines with that's programmable, you can put that in here and still have the power cooling and space to be able to go and place a bunch of cards. You're not just limited to one, you could actually put up to like four big GPUs in the system. On the other hand, if you don't necessarily wanna go use the dual width or double width cards and you just wanna use something that's a little bit thinner, you could actually just go and put things like other networking cards in there. So you could have a ton of networking ports on the system because you just have so many expansion options. And the risers themselves are actually configurable, so you can actually use some slots as either by 16 slots or you can split them into by eight slots. And so there's a ton of configurability and the whole idea of this is it's easy to service and you can deploy it quickly. And there was one feature, and I mentioned that there are some features that we really haven't seen with Supermicro previously. And this is a really good example. So you can actually take out this middle riser and you pull out the middle riser and sure, it's a riser, it's cabled. That's something that we see on a lot of systems. But what we don't necessarily see on a lot of systems is what's below that. It may not be obvious, but Supermicro actually has the M.2 slots. And those M.2 slots, you can put SSDs in, but the SSDs don't actually go on the motherboard. Instead, there are actually these little spring-loaded retention mechanisms here. And so you actually hang the M.2 SSD off the side of the motherboard out towards the front of the chassis. And because you don't have the motherboard below it, you actually can do it in a thinner profile, which means you can actually fit the entire stack of components. So you get up to two M.2 slots, and they're actually really cool in how they're implemented. And for anybody that's a storage buff out there that wants to see something that's actually kind of cool in the system, let's go take this riser and open this one up. Whoa, there we go. Okay, so what you can see on this riser is that there are four PCIe slots. All right, and so one of the things that I saw in the system that is really cool that is actually really applicable to this whole edge scenario is this card right here. Now what Supermicro actually has is a card that can handle multiple M.2 drives. And you might be thinking, hey, that's a really cool card because I could put extra storage on there and you know, I've seen things like that in the PCIe Gen 3, now PCIe Gen 4 generations, I've seen that before. But in this particular use case, what you're gonna see is that we actually have these giant active heat sinks and fan units. And the idea here is that not only could you have something like a SSD, but you could also put little accelerators. You could have AI accelerators, little FPGAs, different accelerator boards that are built on that M.2 form factor, or you can mix and match. You could have storage and accelerators. And so this adds a ton of flexibility into an already very flexible edge system. All right, now powering this entire expansion complex and all the stuff that we've seen on the front here, we have dual Intel Xeon CPUs. And specifically, these are Intel Xeon or third generation Intel Xeon scalable processors, codenamed Ice Lake. You can learn more about Ice Lake on the STH main site. We have full reviews and all that kind of stuff, and we can go through all the details of why these are different. But specifically for the system, there are a couple things that are much different and much improved over the previous generation of Cascade Lake processors. A couple of the big features are, one, we can support up to 40 cores in a system like this because this can support up to 270 watt TDP CPUs, which would be something like the Platinum 8380. Not all edge systems can actually support those high core count CPUs. The other big thing that we get is we also get a new memory subsystem really, right? We get a total of eight DDR4-3200 uh, channels 
per CPU. And what that allows you to do is get more memory bandwidth, but also put more just actual memory into these systems. The other thing is that we get Intel Optane PMEM 200, which is Opt Optane DC persistent memory in the previous generation. So if you want to tie that out, you can. But you also get support for that technology. So you can get super fast persistent storage or you know, potentially just more memory capacity using those as well in the system. And then the big one, of course, is the fact that we get PCIe Gen 4 and we get more lanes. So not only did Intel go from PCIe Gen 3 to PCIe Gen 4 in this generation, but we also went from a total of 96 PCIe Gen 3 lanes in the previous gen to now we can do 128 PCIe Gen 4 lanes. And what that practically means is that a solution that has this much flexibility up front would not have been possible with the previous generation. And so that 128 lanes definitely matters for a system like this because it's giving it completely new capabilities that just didn't have in the previous gen. Now there's absolutely way too much to go into in terms of the Ice Lake improvements. There are other things like, for example, new AI acceleration instructions that Intel has in this generation. So if you want to go check out more of that, again, go check out the STH main site, but let's keep moving through the system. Specifically, what's behind the CPUs and what's behind the memory? And what you really see here is that we get basically two sets of components and one might surprise you. The first one that we get is fans. Now in a normal 2U server, you might see fan or fan partitions actually in the middle of the system, but here they're all the way at the rear of the chassis. That means that these fans can actually be serviced without having to go inside the chassis. And so they're hot swappable and pretty easy to go pull out. I'm gonna give that a shot right here. Yep, pretty easy to get out. Now there are a total of six fans on the system. And those six fans are actually in that number six actually also matches to the fact that there are a total of six U.2 NVMe hot swap base. Now what's a little bit different on this system versus other systems is the fact that the U.2 bays are actually on the rear rather than the front. On a normal server, they would be on the front, but because we have all of this IO, well, you have to put your storage somewhere, you want it to be hot swappable, and that's why it's on the rear of the system. And so you can just go and pull out the drives from the back so they are serviceable without having to get into the system, which means that they're hot swap and much easier to service, which is definitely what you want in the system. Some folks may be wondering, well, hey, you know, what if I need to go swap out SSDs? And if they're on the rear of the system, doesn't that kind of make it a little bit harder to get to? It does on one hand, but on the other hand, I guess you're prioritizing all of this IO. And so that's where they basically have to go in order to have them. And something that Supermicro did that's a lot different in this generation versus previous generations is that you can actually get six that go all the way across the chassis. In previous generations of like 1U or you know when you have a row of these two and a half inch drives, you'd only be able to put five across. So this actually has six because they're using higher density trays than the previous gen. And there is one other very tiny little minutia detail that I want to cover because I just thought it was interesting on this system versus some of the other ones that we've looked at. And specifically, that's the fact that there are service tags actually both on the front and the rear of the system. In normal servers, you're only going to see it on one side, usually the front. So it's actually kind of a little different that you see it on both sides. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this look at the Supermicro SIS 220HE FT and R. This is a really cool edge system and frankly it was one that was really kind of great that we got to come down to Supermicro and actually go check this thing out. Just want to say a quick thank you to the Supermicro team for actually pulling this out of a test rack so that I could go pull it apart and show you on camera. That was awesome that you guys let me do this, so thank you. And of course if you like this video, why don't you give us a like, click subscribe, turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. We're going to have more from this series coming, so definitely check that out. And as always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.